Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I've got four Shiraz E wines. Uh, the first two aren't all Shiraz. Uh, three of them are from South Africa, but the first one's from India. Um, it's a Fratelli uh, Classic Red. Uh, it's Shiraz based blend. I think it's 80% Shiraz and 20% uh, Cabernet Franc. 2011 vintage from uh, the Maharish, Maharashtra province. I don't know my Indian geography. I should go there and find out more about the place and its wines. Well, it smells lovely, yummy, almost smells like Beaujolais. Uh, there's this fresh, crunchy juiciness about it. And when I say like Beaujolais, it smells like good Beaujolais. It smells like it's got this, uh, I think there's some of it that'll be made in carbonic maceration. Um, so it's captured the juiciness of the fruit. There's this warm plum, raspberry, uh, bouncy, vibrant, tigger-like fruit, uh, unhampered by oak from the smell of it. it smells good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I like I like that rounded juice. It, there's a there's a ripeness about the fruit, but there's also a freshness about it. Um, I had a Cabernet Sauvignon from these guys a while ago, and there was a really not very nice burnt character intruding here. I just got a little touch of that, uh, but it's not. It's 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 way way back in the background. It's that juicy, friendly, pleasant come hither fruit that's um, that that's all about. Almost the sort of red that um, you could chill and uh, uh, yeah, half an hour dunk it in the stream for your picnic. Especially if it's got a screw cap. Next one, I think it's also 80% uh, Shiraz. This is uh, Ridgeback uh, Vineyard Vansha SGMV 2010. Um, uh, SGMV, uh, Shiraz 80%, Grenache 10, Mourvedre 8, Viognier 2. Give it a whirl. Now there's a solid juicy sweetness here. Um, I'd call it uh, black brie, black currant, uh, maybe a bit of plum, uh, and there's this uh, vanilla and floral ed uh, thing going on in the background. Uh, I don't know whether that, some of that's from the oak or whether it's from the Viognier, uh, but it uh, doesn't smell like it's going to be, it smells, it smells quite full and ripe, uh, but it, it doesn't, none of the characters feel like they've gone into that jammy, um, and also doesn't feel like they've gone they've, they've overworked the fruit so I look at it and it's a it's it's um, it, it's not one of those wines that well someone said you could walk a mouse over it's it's it, it looks like it's going to be genuinely a medium to full bodied rather than a fuller to full very fullest body I like the juicy fruit there's this um, chunky uh, character about it um, a bit of cherry in with those uh, the berries and the black currant Maybe if I have a problem, uh, the oak seems to be at the moment sitting slightly apart from it. Um, it. It almost feels like they've put some of it in new oak and the rest of it not in new oak. I'd have almost wished they'd put all of it in bigger, older oak. Uh, you've got, you'd have got better integration and that oak character, while it's not dominating the wine, wouldn't be quite as uh, clunky as it is. But um, I do like it. Yeah, and uh, the, fla the flavours I'm left with are on that fresh side rather than on the galumphing side. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. The last two, I think, are pure Shiraz. Uh, so, um, wine number three is Excelsior uh, Paddock Shiraz uh, 2010 from the Robertson region. Again, I look at this and it's a promising colour. It doesn't, again, doesn't look like someone's gone over the top to uh, uh, to produce a wine with massive extract. Um, and there's a freshness about it. Um, uh, it, it feels like uh, there's uh, there's more there's more fragrance and uh, peppery character, more of the earth, I'd say, than than in the previous one. The previous one was maybe getting its um, extra layers from uh, components from the other varieties. Here, it feels more like it's something of the soil. Spicy plum, uh, blackcurrant, blackberry herbiness about it. Um, there's, uh, and there's this juicy freshness. There's a, a slightly meaty character coming through too. Um, and um, as with, um, I, I, well, all of them so far, it, they've been on the fuller flavoured and, but on that genuinely medium, medium bodied side, which I'm very pleased to see. South Africa with its Shiraz did go through a stage when it was trying to uh, emulate a certain style of Australian Shiraz and, uh, uh, and get wines that were as big as possible. Uh, but here, this is a pretty grown-up wine, and I said with the first one, uh, a wine that you could almost chill. Here, uh, I, I don't mean chill it for like two hours or so, but uh, certainly a quarter of an hour on a fridge on a, on a warm evening, uh, and bring it out and have it with um, a cold roast beef salad. That would be pretty tasty, I think. Of course, it depends what you've got in the salad and what dressing you're putting on and all that, but... Anyway, final wine, um, Seven Springs at Syrah, 2010, um, from, uh, the, from the Overberg region. Now, these guys have got 
vineyards in several Overberg it takes in quite a lot of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, of regions in the southern bit of South Africa I think it takes in Elim, Elgin, uh, Walker Bay, Stroke Hermana so I'm not exactly sure where the vineyard well, apologies for the hiccup there. Uh, my camera started be beeping and I went to look at it and it said memory card full. So uh, anyway, I was talking about the Seven Springs and uh, how they've got, uh, I think they've got vineyards in quite a few bits of, of the Overberg. Uh, so not sure whereabouts this comes from. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Oh, there's something, that there's, the wine this reminds me of, I don't know if it exists anymore, there was something that was, uh, um, I'm not sure whereabouts in central Victoria in Australia, there's a winery called Mount Anarchy, uh, and it's that mixture of uh, almost uh, ca caricature cassis uh, with mint in there, uh, and but then with plushness on, on its bones as well, uh, and it smells like it's got a, some, some of the, the fresh pepper, spice, black currants, blackberries, uh, very ripe, no, uh, red currants isn't it and and and, and this plumminess going all all over it uh, but it, there's there's uh, all the way through it there's this peppery freshness and uh, the mint is there uh, sometimes uh, the, i find australian wines can some of them can be too minty here it's it's a grace note there it's it's a it's a little touch of a melody line there it's not taking over the wine it smells good i like the precision the bounce um yes i mean that cassis is the thing that's driving it uh, people talk about uh, um, Cabernet Sauvignon, the tasting of, uh, of black currants, but there I get a very, very strong black currant imprint. But there's this spice around it, um, and what's good about it is that it's, I mean, it's 14% alcohol, the highest of these, uh, 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 the highest of all of them. But it's got this freshness. It's it's quite full-bodied but fresh. The ones before uh, more on the medium-bodied side. Here uh, you get the you you, you do get a, a yeah fuller, fleshier flavour, but it's a fresh fleshy flavour, I can just about say that, um, and um, I mean I, don't, I have no idea how young the, the vines are, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're uh, five years old or less, but it's looking pretty smart at the, as it is at the moment, and um, I think that, um, actually they're, 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 I, 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 I've enjoyed this more than I expected to, I, I, thought, I thought there'd be some good ones in here, but I didn't think that uh, I'd enjoy all of them quite as much as I did. I would still say that's my favourite, and then second favourite, third favourite, fourth favourite. But even the Indian one at this end, uh, I'd happily sit down uh, with a slightly charred sausage and uh, drink a glass or two of that. Uh, but I think tonight I'll be on the Seven Springs. See you soon.